Hey guys, this is Watch from the MW Show, and I just want to make a quick video on how to set up Infinity relatively easily and without breaking the bank. Now, if you have a new graphics card from AMD, chances are that it's going to have a couple of extra connections at the back. And uh, that special connection that we're looking for to connect the third monitor or the fourth monitor uh, will be uh, pertaining to DisplayPort. Now, DisplayPort is a little bit different than the other connections. It allows uh, a little more compact signal, but it, it really displays all the signal properties that you find on VGA, except, of course, it shrinks down the size quite a bit. And uh, it's a little more refined signal um, uh, pertaining to the digital quality. But, uh, but the problem is that AMD really wants you to use a proper monitor for this. So uh, only some monitors are out there that actually have a display port natively built in. Uh, those entail like Dell monitors and some of the HPs, but they're really pretty expensive and they're really hard to get. You have to special order them. Um, but you can actually do this setup with any kind of monitor, uh, any kind of monitor that has the standard connections, DVI, HDMI, or VGA. So in order to get this to work without using a, a DisplayPort monitor, you could of course get adapters. Now there are special adapters that you need to uh, convert these signals. In particular, if you want the best quality, you go with a DVI to DisplayPort, which if you're going to do it properly, you need an active element in there. So there'll be a USB connection separate to actually get more power for the conversion process to happen. Interestingly, if you get one of these, which is a uh, VGA to DisplayPort, these actually have a built-in converter built inside that actually converts the signal from DisplayPort to VGA relatively easily. And uh, in terms of quality, you don't lose too much because you're still representing the same resolution, the same amount of pixels. Uh, the colors and the amount of information, however, is a little bit different. Uh, so if you do want the best quality possible, I would recommend going to a DisplayPort uh, to active conversion DVI adapters. Those usually tend to run about $100 and you can probably find even cheaper. But if you want to spend something under $50 or $30, I would recommend going to a VGA to DisplayPort because I've done side-by-side -side comparisons testing out VGA and the VGA connection, the VGA conversion. Uh, connection process and there doesn't seem to be a difference from the naked eye. The only issue is you do have to get a, a high quality adapter. So this one that you see over here uh, I bought actually about a couple months ago and it worked for about two weeks. Uh, unfortunately kind of uh, had an error inside and, and it doesn't work anymore but I bought this only for five dollars on eBay and you can find these of course on Amazon but I don't really recommend these I didn't have very uh, good luck with these. Uh, what you do want to get is a lot of these companies, um, graphics card companies, are making special adapters that will work really well with them and they come with great warranties. The one that I currently use is this one from Sapphire. Um, it, it, it's a much better build quality. Uh, the internals of course are a lot soldered a lot better, the less chance of anything going wrong and uh, this we've been using for months and months and months and nothing has gone wrong and the quality and everything is quite exceptional. So we'll take a look at the back of the computer and I'll show you how we actually get all these connections in place. So here we are at the back of the computer and we're right behind the graphics card. I'm using a 5850 from PowerColor which uh, has an arrangement of outputs in this order. Your graphics card might have a different arrangement but it should be relatively similar. So I'm just going to connect the two DVI connections to the DVI ports at the back. So with the VGA connection, I simply take my Sapphire adapter and I plug it right into there. And I plug the uh, DisplayPort connection to the DisplayPort connection on the far end. And that is really it for the connections. So once you've connected all the connections at the back, you might experience something different than what's happening over here. So you have, right now we have two monitors on and a third one is off. So the first thing you want to do is open up your Catalyst Control and make sure you have the latest driver update from AMD and you can get those from AMD's website and uh, go into the desktop and displays menu. So what you want to do when you're at this menu is uh, go ahead and see if all three monitors are being recognized in which case the graphics card is recognizing all three of the monitors that we have connected which is always a good sign and uh, go ahead and duplicate all the monitors uh, to, to number one so we'll go ahead and duplicate this one over here. Let's continue. Uh, just press yes for that and we can see that both 
monitor is now duplicated and select the one that's not being active at this point and duplicate that as well and now we can see that all three monitors are now duplicated so now what you want to do is right click on the main section over here and go to display group and go create group and this is what's going to allow us to create that one large desktop space so over here you can choose whichever array you want we're just going to go with this one over here which is a three horizontal widescreen display and we'll accept that and as you can see right now the arrangement of all the three monitors is is off so in order to uh, fix that arrangement problem it asks you is the desktop arrangement correct and in this case it's not so we'll just select no right there and uh, what you'll see now is that you'll see that there's going to be uh, two blank screens and one is going to be highlighted blue and you just select whichever rectangle that's highlighted so in this case it's our center monitor and then uh, over here now this uh, right monitor is now being selected and we just select the right rectangle and it'll automatically then arrange itself in the proper orientation and the proper arrangement so at this point you can also compensate for the bezel um, and edges uh, for the displays but I'm fine with that you can do that if you want but I'm fine so if you go into your screen resolution menu in Windows 7 you'll see that it's treated uh, this whole three monitor setup is treated as one whole single desktop uh, just a massive desktop um, the resolution of 5760 by 1080 so if you have a computer game that's uh, iFinity enabled it works really quite great all your regular menu stuff is right in the center where you would expect it but all the peripheral information is spread across the uh, peripheral monitors and it really works uh, quite well so if you go ahead and play a game you'll notice that everything works really well the picture is quite consistent there's no difference in terms of quality across different monitors and everything is quite seamless so thank you so much for watching if you have any questions regarding anything I've talked about in this video uh, please feel free to leave a comment down below or message us on YouTube and if you like what we do please subscribe and we'll I'll see you later take care